Okay, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. Okay, and this video is a second in a series uh, involving a water hammer. And uh, once again, uh, my main reference for this is an excellent text, uh, Fluid Transients and Systems by uh, Professors Wiley and Streeter. Uh, the first uh, video in this series was where we uh, showed how we can use the method of characteristics to uh, set up uh, for water hammer analysis. And we set that up for interior nodes inside a pipeline and also included uh, two boundary conditions where a pipe is connected to a, a constant head reservoir and the pipe uh, terminated with a valve discharging uh, to atmosphere. And in this uh, snippet, uh, we are going to be uh, investigating our grid convergence uh, using the uh, method uh, set up in the uh, previous video. Well, what is grid convergence is, well, the uh, method of characteristics uh, typically is a, uh, in terms of numerical accuracy, is a first order scheme or a second order scheme. And what does the order of a scheme means? Well, as you uh, decrease the step size, i.e. delta x, what does that do to your error term? If it's a second order team, then the error term goes down as a squared. If it's a first order term, a scheme, it goes down linearly. Not often in method of characteristics do we see grid convergence tests, but there's a lot of academic papers uh, uh, denoting whether or not their scheme is first order or second order accurate. And that is important in some cases. It's extremely important. I will tell you up front that I have used uh, two uh, commercial codes uh, uh, based upon the method of characteristics. Uh, one was in the petroleum industry uh, and is commonly used to analyze uh, very long pipelines. It is a first order scheme. And also I used a, uh, a water hammer analysis that's uh, been approved by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and again it is a first order uh, scheme. And so they can give uh, good results uh, regardless as that I'm going to be employing a second order scheme in this video and uh, seeing what the uh, actual convergence is. Our, our theoretical convergence is squared or two. Uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, so doing a very quick review, the governing partial di differential equations are from the conservation of momentum and conservation of mass. These are partial differential equations in X and T, and the method of characteristics uh, will allow us to convert these into ordinary differential equations and they'll be simpler to solve. Uh, before we move on, uh, we will be computing in piezometric head and also something that we don't always see in our fluid mechanics equations is the celerity of the wave speed and that takes into account the uh, compressibility of the uh, liquid and also the elasticity of the uh, pipe. Okay, so the method of characteristics takes our partial differential equations and converts them into ordinary differential equations. Uh, the C plus uh, characteristics are valid along the uh, C plus characteristic as shown in this grid. And the C minus characteristic is valid along the, not too surprising, C minus characteristic as shown in this grid. So these are simpler equations and we will uh, uh, change these into algebraic equations through discretization, numerical techniques, and we will come up with what we uh, believe is a second order scheme. Okay, so uh, we go through these equations. We should note that's really the last term where we integrated the friction term is where uh, the second order accuracy uh, comes into play. Typically, we make simplifications, and these are the equations that we typically solve on the grids. So big picture, we know all the initial conditions, and then we start marching up through time. And so in this case, the uh, node at I, J plus 1, is what we're solving for. The unknowns are the piezometric head and the flow. We know everything at time level J, and we take these equations, which are valid along the C plus and the C minus characteristics. We have two equations two unknowns, uh, we solve for the head and the flow. Okay, so here is the uh, case study. The basis for our case study is that we have a, a pipeline from a fixed head reservoir terminated by a valve, which is discharging the atmosphere. At time is equal to zero, we have steady state conditions. At time is equal to zero plus, we shut the valve immediately, kind of an academic problem. And so the full Joukowsky pressure wave is developed, which will travel up the pipe, decreasing the flow and increasing the head. Okay, so we're gonna use a, uh, a full grid. We're not gonna be using a staggered grid that, that was introduced in our, our last video. They give identical results with the full grid. 
a little bit easier to incorporate the boundary conditions. And again, to remind us is that is really the uh, this integral of q squared dx, which comes out of our uh, method of characteristics uh, ODEs, that really is uh, where we use an estimation, and our estimation should be second order accurate. And what do we mean by that? Well, first let me uh, call uh, delta x equal to h. It's just a little bit cleaner notation. And looking at Taylor's expansion, I have a computed solution at point i using step size h. That's equal to the exact solution plus some error terms. And right off the bat, we typically throw out the higher order terms. So the first error term, in this case, q1, that's what we call the order of our scheme. And we spec our q1 when we calculate it is going to be second order accurate. Okay, well, what is the exact solution? If we knew the exact solution, we really wouldn't have to be going through all this. We're going to have to come through that. And so how do we do that? Uh, well, again, looking at our, our Taylor's expansion, we are going to define a, an error term, which is equal to the exact solution minus the computed solution. And from that, we're going to get a result that combined with some other, another equation, uh, we're going to be able to compute the, uh, the convergence rate. Uh, but again, what is the exact solution? Well, we're going to have a workaround on that, is that we are going to compute on a very fine grid and say that's, we're going to use that for our exact solution. So we're going to define our term, our error terms, in terms of a very fine grid solution. And so go ahead and proceed along that path. Our most coarse grid is H. Then we will have the step size H over 2. Uh, for both of these, we can calculate our error terms, and we are left with these equations. And from that, we can combine that by ratio of the error terms to 2 to the Q1 power. And taking the natural log or the logarithm of each size, I am able to solve for the observed convergence rate. Then I will go to step size H over 4. And I've already got solution at h over 2, so I can combine those in a similar manner and now convert a new observed convergence rate. And I can continue doing that using the step size h over 8. And you see how this is going, where we're hoping our Q1s, as we refine our grid, uh, will approach our theoretical convergence of 2. All right. Well, what step size am I using? Well, I'm going to, the first for my most coarse grid, I'm going to use uh, 10 pipe lengths, and that gives me a, uh, a discretization, spatial discretization of 60 meters. And then I'm going to have that use 30 meters, 15 meters, and 7.5 meters. I'm going to be calculating the error on all four of these types of grid spacings. Uh, what is the grid spacing I use for my pseudo exact solution? Well, I have it again, so 3.75 meters, and this is a very very fine grid. Okay, so again, uh, at time is equal to zero, I've got steady state. At time is equal to zero plus, I instantaneously shut the valve, and there's going to be a pressure wave traveling up the pipeline. Uh, what does the solution look like? Here it is uh, in terms of two tables, piezoelectric head and flow, time, steady state is the bottom roll in green. We're marching up through time vertically. And we'll see at the valve, we slam the valve shut. Immediately we get the full Joukowsky pressure rise. And this wave will travel up the pipeline. And you'll see the results of that along the vertical uh, at node equal 1. That's a fixed grade at location 0. That is a fixed grade node, the reservoir. So it stays at 150 meters. And so at that point in time, the wave would reflect negatively and continue and bounce back up into the uh, pipeline, but I stopped the analysis at 0 0.5 seconds. Flow is a very similar situation. Uh, in the green, we have steady state 0 0.5 uh, cubic meters per second. I slam the valve shut, and you'll see the flow is brought to zero again along the diagonal as we march up along the uh, characteristics. And now when the uh, wave hits the uh, constant pressure reservoir, it's going to reflect negatively, and that's going to suck flow back into the reservoir, so we get minus uh, 0 
Okay, here's what the actual transient looks like. No surprises here. Okay, so I'm just not going to show the details calculation, but when I did the calculation on using a spatial discretization of 60 meters and 30 meters, uh, my error term with the 60 meters was actually uh, bouncing around everywhere, so we did not get good convergence, and the observed convergence was actually less than one. Uh, improved significantly when we went compared a step size of 30 meters and 15 meters, but still not anywhere close to two. Uh, but when I compared uh, 15 meters to 7.5 meters, now we're at 1.6, so it is approaching two. Now, does this mean that uh, this methodology is not, in fact, second order accurate? Well, you would never actually receive uh, an observed convergence of two. I expect if you kept refining the grid, it's going to be, uh, would go up to like 1.75, maybe even uh, 1.8. Uh, keep in mind that we threw out the higher order terms. And to be honest, even though the method characteristic does handle with a current number equal to one, does. Uh, have a very, uh, very good uh, waveform uh, as the uh, pressure wave uh, uh, travels up through the pipe. Anytime you have a, a jump discontinuity, uh, it's, it's hard to get good convergence. So anyway, you hear people say they have a second order accurate uh, scheme. If they don't give you a, a grid convergence, then well, what do they really have? Oftentimes in implementation, they will have a first order accurate boundary condition and we will be exploring that in the subsequent video. Uh, but in the end, even in this case, uh, again, we are not getting second order convergence. All right, well, that's a, an introduction to grid convergence, often not uh, discussed in a water hammer analysis. It really should be. If you read the textbooks, they will often recommend, say, pick a grid uh, based upon the time scale that you want. Well, maybe that's good, maybe it's insufficient. And if you're, uh, uh, really want to make sure that your results are, are adequate. Uh, I would always recommend that you continue to refine your grid and compare your results. If there's no appreciable change, that does give you a level of confidence that you've achieved a good solution. So I hope you uh, found this interesting. Uh, we're going to continue with this uh, series. And uh, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, more importantly, have a great day.